Ever think about participating in things like Hourly Comics Day or similar events where they invite you to take on a creative challenge to make some comics? It sounds really cool and, and, and inviting. And you're excited, but you end up invo- avoiding it entirely. But you still think about it like, gosh, what if I did that? Why didn't I do that? And all that. Well, in, or, or you go ahead and jump in. You're like, hey, great. Sounds good. But then you get stuck. And, you know, it doesn't feel great. Well, it's frustrating, right? Well, we're going to take a worksheet from that me and my students use in the customizing your next creative challenge. And we're going to turn that and focus it on, on, on solving some problems with comics. Uh, we'll put it to use to puzzle out a f- making a frequent comics making challenge of some sort. And will we go with hourly? Will we go with, you know, daily or particular styles and choices? Well, stick with us to find out when I talk about it with Jersey. Thank you for downloading and listening to a Lean Into Artcast mini workshop episode, or is it a workshop episode? It, we're going to do a demonstration of something practical. This is where we explore an art or creative task and demonstrate how we think and work on it. My name is Jersey Drost. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. The other host is named. Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I'm a UX designer, interactive maker, and a teaching artist as well. So... Yeah, you teased out that, you know, uh, hot on the heels of an episode where I was expressing all of this fear about taking on a certain creative challenge. You're like, Rob shows up. He's like, all right, let's 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 try uh, my worksheet, my workshop. Right. So <laughs> what are we going to be covering? Well, um, so let's see. We do this thing in a, in a mini workshop episode and who knows if it's mini, right? Because a lot of time I Anyway, we talk about like why this matters and we'll do some live demonstration, right? There's a worksheet and it's real and we'll get you, you know, you'll have a link. You can download it. You can play along with us, right? You'll have examples hearing how we think about this through and, um, you know, like what do we, what do we get out of all this and, and, you know, what do we learn along the way? So that's, uh, that's what this is about. All right. So, um, real quick. Who needs this and why? I mean, I know why I'm here for this, Rob. But I'm saying, like, for the general public who just like hit play on the video, um, who 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 is this for? What we're about to demo. Well, uh, so creative challenges, making comics, um, like you you're making more work to put in the into the world, right? So like you could be doing that because maybe you're an art student, and you want more publicly shareable things to demonstrate your skill or the things that you care about. Um, creative challenges that can, you know, be tempting just because it sounds like a fun, fun, playful workout thing, right? Doing something you like to do a lot. Um, but then the product can have a lot of effects. You could be a cartoonist looking to, um, show up with a different kind of work, right? You're, you're super known for one kind of thing. Maybe you want to do different things. This is a safe experiment to play with. Um, and you get to play along publicly, maybe if it's a social and that's part of the the allure of these creative challenges is often a lot of other people are doing it at the same time. And it feels like an event where we're all sharing together. And, you know, like people have talked about certain challenges, like can also elevate you as an artist because everybody's following that hashtag that month, that week, that day. Right. So it's an opportunity to get your stuff seen by more people in a, in a more um, natural or unexpected way. Mm. Yeah. And, and right. That's um, it you know, could be social. It could be private. All sorts of different factors there. Um, then there's, let's see, um, I think it could be useful for teaching artists. So let's say you want to make um, a, a certain kind of activity um, you can uh, for making comics. Well, this is a recipe that help you come up with that activity for you or for other people. Um, another thing that I think is also useful is what if you're going to make a jam comic together as an event, right? Do some kind of collaboration in the, you know, in it, in a context of a creative challenge. So, well, this will help you get everyone, you know, on a, on a shared common ground. So this thing can work for everybody. Mm. Anything, any monsters along the way that we need to watch out for any points of friction, things to be aware of before diving in? Um, well, I mean, we'll be using a worksheet, but don't worry, we'll give you a link to that. Um, mention it, uh, it's, well, we'll mention it in just a minute here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is part of a workshop that I do 
that I'll be also um, offering uh, as like we can do a one on one version of that, too. We'll talk about that later. So, yeah, it, you know, you could get into you could get all you need out of this episode of uh, of the show or you can always follow up, check out the workshop. Um, but, you know, uh, if if uh, the payment's a concern, well, here you go. Here's the here's the version that you can have in the show. Um, then um, let's see. So what we'll demonstrate in this is a, is a series of sort of uh, thinking, explorational, um, it's self-interview activities to try to come up with your own recipe in the end of, of well, what do you think would be that worthwhile creative challenge? And we break it down into smaller concerns. We're first, we think about fun and we try to, well, find what's fun for you. Uh, we think about where we're going to play and we think about uh, rules that shape the thing as far as, you know, what it feels like, you know, for going, you know, going into it, experiencing it, what kind of things come out of it, the learning, the product output and the tools, stuff like that. And, and then now we've done this foundational work. It sets us up to come up with a creative challenge recipe. And that's what we'll be taking on today. So we, you're going to help me come up with my own creative challenge recipe to take on. I'm just going to pull it out of a hat because we talked about last week, hourly comics a day, right? As an example, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Let me figure out a way yeah, to get more right excited up. about this. All right. So how about we take a break real fast and then we'll come back and we're going to do all those things that you described. Um, so we need to, you know, this project is, uh, it takes a lot of work and you know, it, it, it we hope if you get value out of this project that you will help make it more sustainable by supporting us on Patreon. Um, there we go. Patreon.com slash Lean Into Art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in what we're doing here and if you get value out of the work that we put together into this Lean Into Art project, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. And I want to thank five people who have been supporting us on an ongoing basis. It means a lot to us. Uh, Metal Witch Sketchbook Project. Thank you so much for believing in us and what we do. And Sarah Lutfi. Thank you, Sarah. It means so much to us. You can find Sarah on Instagram at twisty underscore tree underscore studios. Sophie Lawson. Thank you, Sophie. You can find Sophie on Twitter at Sophie Lawson Art. Stephen Black. Thank you, Stephen. You can find Stephen Black on Black's Sideshow on Twitter. Uh, two S's in the middle. And Good to Be Curious. Thank you so much. It is Good to Be Curious. You can find Good to Be Curious on Twitter at Good to Be Curious. You can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art where you will find all the shows we make including the extra leans the shows we record only for people who support us on patreon it also gets you access to the patreon only section of the lean into art discord which you can find at patreon.com or rather <laughs> lean into art.com slash discord and uh there you can hang out with fellow leaners and talk about topics we explore on the show in a time shifted manner where your comments are not attached to a video um, and there's even a social channel where you can just share things that are going on in your life. It's at, so once again, the way to get there is patreon.com slash Lena Tart. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. It really does. All right. Uh, I'm going to play music. So we know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a workshop episode, so that's the, that's the official music for when we get to the the main part of the show. So, demo time. Let's let's. How do we how do we get started, Rob? Well, okay. So first, you're you're going to want to get your own copy of of the uh, the worksheets, um, four pages, right? Mm -hmm. And you can get that easily through the uh, link of uh, you ever use Bitly, right? So you go to bit.ly slash C Y N C C W S. So bit bit dot L Y slash C Y N C C W S. Okay. There you go. So customizing your, customizing uh, your next creative challenge worksheet. If you're wondering what those letters all add up to. That's, that's the code. You know the code. All right. So yeah, you, you get your copy of this and you can work it. You can work digitally. You don't have to print it out on old fashioned paper. Um, maybe not everyone has a printer who, you know, who has a printer. Uh, um, <laughs> and, uh, but there's apps like squid or even, you know, other things in like built into, uh, I, I know the Mac has, um, uh, an app that's pretty good with PDF and stuff like that built in anyway. So you just want to, you know, get ready to, to work with it. Ideally you're ready to sort of 
you know, write down words and uh, doodles along the way. Okay. Because they'll get your ideas in, in through the self interview of uh, this, these set of worksheets. Um, well, so you what do you think? In? Yeah. I mean, you, you want to, want to dive in? Um, All right. Are you, are you going to walk me through it? You want to like, I'll, I'll write on my, uh, print out cause I have a printer. Um, and, uh-huh. and we'll go through it together. Or do you want to use your overhead cam? Where do you want to start? Um, actually go for it. I mean, I mean, we can, um, I may be writing along too, and we may hop back and forth as we share what, what's going on. But, um, I, I also have ones that have been done already. So the first page is the, well, it's called customizing your next creative challenge. And it's got that top section of find your fun. Um, mm. and we'll take, let's take, um, you know, a second to appreciate this is, you know, the idea is, is you. You probably play games. Do you play any video games, Jersey? Uh, occasionally, um, yes. Board games? Yeah. Board games, yes. Okay. So any kind of game. And if if you need, you could think of any experience that you um, would classify as fun. But mm. this is mostly a like a, a game thing. So let's list a few games that, that come to mind. All right. um, I love Mastermind. That's a, that little code-breaking game from, is it Milton Bradley or Parker Brothers? I can't remember. I also like Sorry. Uh, oh, that's a fun yeah. board game. Um, let's see, video games. What video games have I played recently? Um, uh, let's see, Return of Samus. Uh, yeah, and these can be all time too. It just mm. things that stand out, right? Oh, things and, that stand out. Well, gosh. and it could be you if and, and so try to come up with a few that um, at the very least that you really do find fun. Um, if you get five, yeah. that is fantastic. Uh, golden axe, axe two, actually golden axe two. Oh, that's a game. Yeah. Yeah. Cause in, already I'm thinking of, of things that you said at the top of this episode, which is like, I know that there's a social component to playing golden axe. Cause like my best memories of it are playing it with you. So. Oh, that, is, that was a lot of fun. I miss arcades. Um, <laughs> so let's okay. see. What about. Now you've got some games that you like. What about a, a few that that um, were a little bit not so fun, or that oh. just just weren't weren't to you? Kind of like, hey, I, uh, I see you, game, and uh, I'm not sure how to like this. I don't, I'm not sure how to like you. <laughs> All right. What well, what was that that Star Wars game I played at your house, Rob? Where I was so bad at it. Was it? Oh, Battle, Battle, Battlefront? Yeah, it's Battlefront. The the sort of relaunch of Battlefront. Yeah. Um, Oh, I was terrible at it. I died so many times and I couldn't even move. I didn't know what I was doing. So it was just like too hard to play for me. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Classic yeah, but, for me is Demon Souls, but um, I know that big love for that the whole community. So that's what's hard is, is like this is not about yucking someone's yum. This is a personal, you know, tuning, right? We all, everyone is into games. Everyone, young and old, everyone plays games. And it's just a matter of trying to, you know, tune in to the ones that, uh, just noticing the, the big ones, the, the waypoints of like, uh, pleasing and even displeasing because they, they can teach us something about what we like. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, how about, um, uh, I'm trying to think of another one that I just did not enjoy. Uh, mm. well, okay. Um, dark escape 4d. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing that one down. <laughs> That's yeah. the game where I sat inside of this little booth and these zombies jumped out at me and Rob stood outside of the of the, the little game console and listened to me scream and scream and scream. Oh uh, yeah. I did I had a bad time playing that game. <laughs> I admire it conceptually. I think it's a brilliant idea mm-hmm. for a game. It was too intense for me. I'll never play VR horror. I bet I, I tell you that right now. All right. Oh, oh, speaking of which, uh, Resident Evil. I love that game. Resident oh, Evil yeah, 2. Nice. One of my favorite games of all time. Okay. Uh oh, and um Mario Kart. All right. Oh gosh, I love I, Mario Kart. I got a lot in here now. So All right. So uh so you have lots of games. So try to take um try to alternate between a, a game you like and a game you don't like and look at the, look at the chart on the right and think about okay. um, what really got you tuned in. So you think of things that are really engaging that's going up on the list and then things that are just, um, just not as much for you. Right. Or, um, or are actively confusing even mm. uh, that'd be go, that'd go way down as far as up and down and then left and right would be 
um, does it, did it feel natural to get good at it? Right. Or, mm. or is it, or is it hard and it still, you know, feels good to play or whatever. And so you just, yeah, easy to hard. Um, however you feel about that, this is just all about, um, just interviewing yourself about feelings about those games. Okay. And yeah. Oh, I forgot another game. Uh, what was that one? Blockout. Oh, classic one. Yeah. Yeah. I love that Tetris. game. 3D yep. Tetris. And I, I, that is one game where I will admit I am really good at it. Um, I'm not good at a lot of games, right. but I'm great at blockout. I held the high score at my arcade for like all of high school and nobody cared. So the blockout goes <laughs> over here. This one's like, he can have that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else was playing Street Fighter 2. Okay, so Golden yeah. Axe 2, I would say, is very engaging, but relatively easy. Mm-hmm. And now we get to life. It is not interesting, and it's very easy. And I hate the messaging in that game. Get oh, married, gosh. have a couple of kids, be a winner at the game of life. Go to heck. Get Have a nice day someplace else. Uh, Battlefront, I would say, was very difficult. Uh-huh. Say Battlefront was over here, like way beyond the edge of it for me. Uh-huh. Dark Escape 4D, um, I would say it was hard because it was so... I was definitely engaged, but it was really hard. Um, mm. Interesting. Resident Evil 2, I would say it was very engaging and relatively... I'd say Resident Evil 2 was right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Mario Kart is actually pretty hard, but it's very engaging. That's I'm interesting. Not... I, I put Mario Kart right in about the same spot, too. Okay, so I've charted out... Fun. Okay. I've charted out my, my things. Now, okay, so then let's, uh, let's ask why. So why was, you know, why was that fun? Like, those, those different games. So let's think about, um, just take a couple notes. What okay. pops to mind um, mm. about something that stands out as uh, fun to you? And it could, and, you know, is it some prompts could be, is it, um, is, is it where it is? Is it the space or the theme? Is it the kinds of choices you, you get to make? Is it the obstacles or the rewards, the characters? Um, of course, story. Mm-hmm. So that's, um, yeah. So just unpacking why something is fun is, is an interesting, uh, interesting work. Like, so, uh, if I were to say yep. that mastermind, like that was one of the first games I thought of. And what I love about yep. it is it's the logic of the game. It's the, it's the mm-hmm. guessing and the reacting to the input from your opponent as they're telling you what colors you got right, what colors you got wrong as you're trying to break the code. So that kind of, that kind of logical backtracking and being able to take my time to do it. So I'm going to take Miss Pac-Man mm-hmm. off of that. I'm going to say like taking time, time ah, yeah. to process. The, the, pack, the, 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 the pack people games are always yeah urgent. Ghosts will eat you. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. Um, and so like even those two examples you listed you listed so far I, you have uh different kinds of fun and uh you almost lumped those two together right i, I almost did uh, yeah but, if, but then what about miss pac-man i'm yep. thinking like it's the chase it's that or, like, i i like to play the the turbo one uh, i really can't play like the the regular one anymore uh-huh. um but i love the urgency of the chase but i also love reacting to the urgency of the chase while forming a strategy on conserving your resources so that when you get to the levels where the ghosts are like, you know, uh, the power pellet only lasts like two seconds long. The power pellets aren't about getting points anymore. It's about just like buying yourself some extra time to clear the board. Um, hmm. I had not thought That's about this cool. before, Rob. I have not thought about this. This is great. Um, well, let me think. So then, and you don't have to go through the whole list too. So, but, mm-hmm. uh, but if you want to do another one or two that, you know, feel free. Looks like, uh, what, what, what's grabbing your attention here? Oh, puzzle uh, solving in Resident Evil 2. Aha. Uh-huh. Puzzle solving, and I would say um, uh, atmosphere. And I would say this is, it, this would go for Resident Evil 2 and the Metroid Prime series. Those are the two things I loved about those games. Um, and going back to taking time to process, like getting having the time to solve the puzzle instead of having to do it very urgently. I think that's what made Battlefront so not fun for me was the fact that you are you have to react very, very quickly. Um, and I like to take my time. So there we go. So okay. what next? 
Well, so then if you could summarize that in this uh, fill in the blank mm. and uh, just give yourself a broad brush of, of what, and you can squeeze in plenty of, you know, a couple ideas in each blank uh, as far as what the game, fun games have, but what they also don't have, which mm -hmm. would be, you know, the things that you'd find in your, in the games that are unappealing to you. Um, okay. So you, um, like for me, like I ended up, uh, I, I put like a lot of times I like games that have discovery, but not, not excessive difficulty. How, mm. However, you know, cause it doesn't, and this isn't to be prescriptive, like whatever comes out, this is, you're doing some journaling here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. What, um, okay. So, so uh, I've got, I've got, uh, for me, fun games have time, logic, and strategy and not speed reaction or impulse. Mm. And now the next prompt is I often like blank level of difficulty. Looking at this, I would say like I tend to like stuff that falls in the mid range of difficulty, right? There you go. Yeah, a cluster pattern happening in that chart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. But sometimes I like high level of difficulty. Right? Mm -hmm. There's this this cluster forming over here and there. Yeah. I don't like it super easy. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Easy and judgy. That's uh, that's right off. <laughs> All right. Off the menu. All right. So um, that helped us tune in to Finding Fun. That was, um, this is, uh, let's see, I don't know if it's, it's, I mean, what you did on your worksheet, that's roughly how they look, you know? If other things come to mind, you, you know, that, that, that is cool. But it's just the, um, uh, I can just hold up to this, sim you know, this, quick camera here um i've i i've one of my one of the times where i where i did this uh where i actually wrote out the names of the games sometimes i actually will abbreviate the the names to try to um avoid you know uh, yucking someone's yum right uh, uh i can so that out. will but then it gets confusing because i'm like which game was that <laughs> <laughs> so um all right but yeah this so that looked great um how do you feel so far about finding your fun uh, that was easier than I thought it was, and yet it was, um, well, if I were to put it on that chart, <laughs> uh, I would say that it falls someplace over here where it wasn't that hard, but it was engaging because I didn't, I've not sat down to like verbalize why I like what I like in terms of the, some of these games. I know I've talked to Mean Streak about Metroid Prime. I could talk about that all day, but um, some of these other games like Mastermind, I don't know. I hadn't thought about why I love that game so much, but I play it every holiday season with my wife. It's like that's one of the go-to. All right, we're playing Mastermind for an afternoon. So, hmm. yeah, it's a good game. Um, okay, so what um, what do you think about now? Let's go on to another element. So we, we're 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 collecting elements to use in our recipe, and so the next element to collect would be looking at where to play. Mm. And that is considering things like. Um, like think of this as a as a space physical virtual conceptual um and a little bit you know starting to think about the social things related so um do you want to play with a crowd mm. or do you want to be so, you know solo um yeah so well in the case of doing hourly comic day this would be something where wait a minute so when you say crowd size does this mean like how many people can see it happening or how many people i'm playing with or crowd size yeah what? it's it's it, crowd size can be um, how like do you want to be part of a big event or a small event? Do, are you starting an event or do you want it to be a big one? You know, then that's it, it's a little bit of um, um, social ambition journaling, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, yeah, got big worldwide. Then uh, yep. Yeah. So then yeah, continue on and just capture your thoughts about location. Like, do you want to play in a particular? single social media venue or a bunch of them or um is that going to be let's see uh you know a physical location you know when when that's an option right right yeah, yeah. so like if we were so. doing like say like uh, a quick draw event at a two calf or something mm -hmm. right um okay now socializing what do we mean by socializing so think a little bit about um, the kind, do you, do you want of uh, interactions with others uh, through this? Uh, and, you know, do you want a lot of it? Do you want a little of it? 
Um, mm. Do you, you know, do you think it should have a hashtag, that kind of thing? So what, what makes this work socially for you? Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, because like I don't want this to take up too much of my extra time for other things. So I'd say medium socializing, just going in and, you know, giving the thumbs up on other people's uh, process. Their, That's their, a component. Their participation. Which, as you mentioned time, I mean, so here you go. What's your availability? Yeah. So. That's a, that's a hard constraint that helps inform. Hmm. So for time availability, 15. I'm going to put 15 minutes. That's all I could hmm. spare for doing a, a comic every hour. Uh, already, that's a lot of time. Actually, I'm going to cut that down. I, I just started doing the math in my head. I'm going to say like seven minutes. I'm going to try to do each of these challenges in seven minutes. That's, that's about all I could reasonably budget in a day right now. Okay. Well, and that's really, really informative. Um, then, um, and so some of these will create tensions among themselves. We're not working on solving the tensions yet. We're just getting, in, we're getting ideas out. Okay. So, um, what type of art do you want to work with? I want to make comics, Rob. I don't know if you know this okay. about me, but I love comics a lot. As a matter of fact, I want to put um, two two gold stars next to comics because that's how much <laughs> I like them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything more specific about it? So. Um, well, oh. Any particular kind of comics? Journal comics. Uh-huh. Okay. And now I'll put purple, because purple's the color of fear, next to that. I feel some tension there. Uh, is um, So is your event um, like and not like other things? Like, what could, could you compare it to? So sometimes when we, when we think of, um, you know, like a new story or an idea or some creative endeavor, it's like, oh, it's like this meets that or, and mm -hmm. it, or it's a lot like this event or, you know, this movie. Well, wh mm -hmm. so what's a, what's your creative challenge you're thinking of like? October and 24 hour comic day. Okay. Because there's the, the pressure to do it all day, but then there's like the sharing and the drawing presumably on paper because I have to draw fast and loose. So mm. what's it? Then, oh, I like this prompt. It's not like these challenges. What is it not like? Um, exactly. Flip that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, it's not like NaNoWriMo because there isn't an implicit suggestion of developing a product through it. Um, <clears throat> and it's not long-term, right? It's one day. Um, it's one intense day rather than one intense month. It's not like Art Sound Off. Mm -hmm. because so it's pretty different in time in time but any yeah like difficulty or it's uh, it's not a competitive event it's right right well see NaNoWriMo is is usually about like accruing something right you're mm -hmm. you're you're gathering a bunch of stuff through daily effort this is I, I don't I I haven't considered it yet, but I don't know what the heck I would do with a uh, hourly comic day comic that I wrote. Right. Um, maybe, maybe it could wind up being something that has a other purpose or utility, but I'm not seeing that off the top of my head. So is that okay. where I capture down here? Yeah. And so there you go. Like you're, you like you're unpacking ideas and, uh, and it makes sense to, um, to get those captured in the notes. Okay. Uh, while you're doing that, I will I'll point out a couple examples. Um, okay. Here's uh here's a couple times when I've used this worksheet and um I start questioning like this is one where I was thinking about um art sound off and like what's starting to gel for me about the where to play and uh, the tensions among these different elements of like, if I care a lot about crowd, but I don't have, uh, and socializing, but I don't have time and availability and, you know, all these things, um, sort of play out and what, what am I noticing? So that's what the notes are for. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so this is kind of just what it ends up looking like. Get your ideas into that, into that journal to just sort of help you out with mm. the recipe stage. Whatever is standing out to you right now is worth capturing. Okay, so I grabbed a couple things, you know, like accruing a thing, uh, uh, sort of like entertaining that thought and reemphasizing to myself it's one day of effort versus long term. And then 
you know, exploration of my skill in a hurried, intuitive way. That's something that I'm looking forward to in this thing. So, um, which is that's that's pretty cool. All right, nice, nice qualities to capture. So let's keep let's keep capturing. Now let's get specific with rules. So we move okay. in to our final stage of ingredients gathering, and um, now we we and we think about sort of you know three key areas of, of our rules. First, we think about what do we want to learn. Okay. Uh, there's, is there personal development, professional development? What kind of, what kind of thing are you expecting as an outcome from, uh, you know, to sort of, uh, yeah. Grow uh, yeah. Audience growth, hoping to get some more followers, uh, for the thing to, to highlight the things that I make. And then new approaches of storytelling, professional development. I want to level up some of my skills as a visual storyteller by working out with a blindfold, right? Um, that's how I think of this is like, I, mm. I know I have skills, but like, let's take away some of my comfort zone to make me have to adapt. And in that adaptation, level up my storytelling skills. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, so what, uh, what now you, you've, so you got some rules. What about your, um, uh, what kind of output do you expect? What are you expecting with this? So you can do, like you mentioned, NaNoWriMo, there's an implication that you're, you're getting a lot closer at the end of the month to having a novel written. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. not trivial. Um, what, um, what do you think? What do you expect to have created from this? Um, well, I mean, like if I were to put it, uh, very concretely, it would be approximately, um, let's see, three panels at, uh, approximately 16 hours was three times 16. That's three, six, six, 24. This is, what is that? What does that wind up being? Um, three, 54 panels, approximately 54 panels of comics, um, possible. <laughs> mini comic I'm going to underline possible twice because I don't know I'm already <laughs> nervous about this thing to like putting the extra em emphasis of like having to make a shippable thing out of it I don't want to burden it with that pressure so right and that's what we're trying to do is figure out the things that are the pressures we want inherently this is a thing you're setting up to be a creative uh, challenge recipe pressure was going to be somewhere but um, where do you want it to be? I'll also say like a uh, potential blog post. Uh -huh. Like collecting all of my panels. So there we go. Nice. Um, so uh, it's, how do you feel about the output? You got some feeling good about those ideas? And mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. Because um, then we move on to uh, tools. Uh, what kind of constraints are you going to put around yourself with this? Is this a no holds barred? You grab something in the kitchen to make a comic or is this um, like, Oh, that is interesting. I haven't considered that either. What would I do this on? Do I do this on like random scraps of paper around the house? Mm -hmm. uh, like, do it, and yep. that would, that would inform some of the constraints I'm working with. Do I work with a bunch of like, I just like close my eyes and grab whatever tools are nearby or do I work with a certain prescribed set of tools? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, analog, digital, Yep. Well, all the, it, all those things. Is it okay if I go back to like what I liked about games to figure this out? Hundred percent. Yeah. All right. So think about I like logic, reacting, and guessing. I like chase, strategy of resources, strategy of resources, puzzle solving, and atmosphere. Okay. Hmm. You know, I'm gonna say random grab bag. Of <laughs> pens, pencils, mm. and random grab bag of paper. Ooh, all kinds that, of yeah. yeah. So that turns into like this whole idea of like finding strategy in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. That I know will make it more fun for me because now it's like, oh, I grabbed a piece of watercolor paper and I grabbed a big pen. Right. So how will that inform the choices that I make and how I represent this hour of my day? Mm. 
that's maybe yeah go ahead. Very, very interesting so okay so then uh that let's see um this is when you're thinking of tools you can think of um your you can really tune up or tune down the difficulty you know grabbing things that are familiar to you or like you're doing with a t with the random twists or you can um think of like is it a lot of components to keep track of and also this is what you need to be prepared with like this is part of before you start the, your challenge you're going to have to have all this stuff on hand so be um you know be aware of like to set yourself up to succeed with uh, planning ahead for the tools you will need. Yeah, Run yeah, this yeah. Because like I also wrote as an option index cards slash microns, which means that okay, I'm gonna have to have approximately 16 index cards set aside and a like more than two or three microns because I'm probably gonna wear one or two out over the course of the day. Um, that I would say index cards slash microns is easy mode. Random grab bag of pens and pencils. Random grab bag of paper is like a little bit more expert mode. Um, so very nice as a food for thought, as a game, you know, fellow game designer, I would say one of those, like those options don't have to be fully disconnected. There could be a little randomality that unites the two. So mm. they could be a little deck of like shuffle the cards. What do you pick mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. roll a dice, that kind of thing. That's so. yeah. That's an interesting idea. Okay. Yep. So you uh, promised me a recipe, hmm. Rob. I Do did, I <laughs> but we ran out of time. <laughs> That's just asking you for do this. <laughs> I'm joking. You are. You seem really psyched up to um, to keep moving because you've well, got all these ingredients. What are you going to do with it? Yep. <laughs> I feel like we should uh, take a break and then come back yes. and do the recipe. What do you think about that? I think that sounds excellent. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to come back in about like two to three minutes and talk a little bit about, um, well, we're going to actually put all this, this thinking together into a recipe is literally what we're going to do. Um, before we do that, we've got to thank some other people. Some people make the show possible and those people are us. We make the show possible. And the thing that I make that I hope you'll check out, is Science Comics Rockets Defying Gravity from First Second Books. And it is a comics documentary about the history and science of rockets as told by the animals who participated in rocket history. And you can find it at sciencecomicsrockets.com where you'll find a link to an eight-page preview. And, I mean, it's in bookstores everywhere. You go to, like, Book Finder, Indie Bound. I recommend you go to those places first. But you can also go to places like, you know, Amazon and so on. Um, go to your local library and check it out for free. Science Comics Rockets. Well, and what I make that I would like you to check out is actually, well, it's the official paid version of what we're experiencing right now in the show. It's customizing your next creative challenge. And if you've been following along, you know exactly what this is all about. But what I'm doing now is, is you'll be able to, um, well, you can go experience it at Skillshare. You can buy your own digital download copy, watch it anytime, or you can schedule a session with me and we'll do your own customizing your next creative challenge, just like I, we did, like Jersey and I did today on the show. So go to robstenziger.com slash store.html and pick your path to customize your next creative challenge. So... Yeah, I am getting a lot out of this uh, so far, just in thinking a little bit more thoughtfully about how I think about like like what I get out of challenges. Um, I've done a lot of challenges over the years, and I have sort of like intuitively hacked them to make certain, to customize them for myself. But I, I've never stepped back and thought in a meta sense of like what, what kinds of gameful events do I find um, pleasurable, right? Mm. Um, so I'm eager and, to die. Yeah, good. Yeah. And tie that in with your goals too. So it's like playfulness and attentionality. Let's do some self interviewing and let's, let's compose that in a creative way that gets you where you, you want to, you want to be. Um, because it's, yeah, it's going to be stressful taking on a creative challenge. Hopefully it's, it's more good stress than negative. Um, I, I, so let's I jump in. The, yeah, one, yeah. One of the things that you've, you've solved with this, I think is when it doesn't go well and you stand back, you're like, I had goals. I figured out how to make this thing manageable. Like, why did I not finish it? 
right? Well, maybe there was like an emotional cost that you hadn't counted on in doing this. And so you're, this is helping mitigate the emotional cost of the challenge. That's really great. So I uh, thanks. I mean, that's that's the hope. Right. And and um, at the very least, the framing of it and knowing that, you know, you're taking on some risks and that's that has some some possibilities that isn't just uh, what an in, 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 in instant path to success. It's hopefully an interesting path to useful experience. And you've you've made it really relevant and about you by going through this kind of exercise. Mm. That's good. Okay. So you said, let's dive in, let's dive in. I've got the creative challenge recipe sheet in front of me, Rob. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So taking, building on what you've learned so far, where do you, you know, like what, what, what comes to mind? What stands out as you've considered the, what's fun, you've considered the, the, the event and the space of this thing, uh, like where to play, you've considered the rules, different kinds of rules. And then um, let's, let's, uh, let's fill in these different blanks, all right. um, to, to consider, um, this, uh, all right, this, this challenge is going to be tuned to what difficulty? I'm going to say medium. Um, okay. Medium difficulty. And, and, uh, and in the notes along the way, like, you know, capture, capture some of the why as far as like, like what's going to make it medium, like what's going to make it, uh, cause that means it's, it's, it's not going to be just. Uh, as simple as, you know, falling off a log. Um, mm -hmm. so that means it's got something to it that makes it challenging a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So for me, it's going to be writing from life, which I don't often do. And like, mm. and like c journaling co in comics, I am great at okay. journaling verbally and in writing, but not in comics form. Mm. Uh, and then the random tool is going to add a, a level of difficulty in that while I'm also trying to like deal with the, uh, tension of doing these tasks, I'm also have the tension of, and make it work with this pen or in this paper <laughs> and so on. Um, which, which has that, as you described, it has this sort of the, the engaging tactical puzzling to, to deal with. Yep. Uh, my yeah. paraphrase, but yeah. Oh, yeah. and I'm then gonna, I'm just going to use that slide. language. We have, uh, what kind of feel? It should feel like something. So let, so that way when you're, you're committed to doing it, it's, it's, it's inherently rewarding in some way, uh -huh. something that you care about experiencing. I'm solving the puzzle every time. How do I make these pieces work together to tell this part of my day? Yeah. All right. And you're committing to make what? Make a comic, uh, comic panels. I don't know what they're going to be yet. I'm, I'm leaving myself that flexibility. Just I'm the, the objective okay. is to make comic panels. Mm -hmm. A th nice. So you got the sequential narrative thing going on, but you don't have, like, you're not assuming like a particular big format structure, et cetera. Um, yeah. Cool. What so, about um, the theme? The theme, I'm going to say uh, like uh, journal daily experience. Nice. Journal daily experience. And this is where you could say, oh, and, and my challenge is all about sci-fi hypothetically living on asteroids or whatever it is. And, um, yep. So this is, um, uh, a good place to capture that. How many times are you going to be making this thing, um, over, um, like what kind of session and how many hours? So let's, let's think about time for these next few blanks. Mm -hmm. So I imagine I'm going to, if I'm up approximately 16 hours a day, uh, I'm going to say about 16 times I'm going to be doing this, um, leaving room in there for me to, not uh, like also be a human being. So I'm not like checking in like a machine every time. Um, mm -hmm. so, so would that be a range between something and 16 or is that 16 is the criteria? Um, 16 times once every hour for 16 hours. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so I'll say, I'll put that in the notes over here once per hour for 16 hours. Mm -hmm. um, session time of how many hours? Let's type 16 times seven, right? Six times seven is what? Two, uh, uh, 3,606. 106. 106 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. So 106 minutes is how many hours? It's like an hour and 46 minutes. All right. Approximately, say approximately one and a half hours. 
one mm-hmm. and a half hours total. Okay. In and uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. The days. How many days is this going to take? Done in one. One day. Sweet. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the rest here. Um, so let's follow along as you as you get your ideas out for the what kind of tools you're going to use. Um, and then there's an extra glitch in the matrix where I put to make an, again, uh, where it's uh, that's an option. You can use that glitch in the matrix. <laughs> so hmm. go ahead, keep filling in those blanks. Okay, so using blank creative tools, um, like this, is this asking for numerical or just like I'm naming the tools? Ah, yeah, name your tools. So like in this recipe, like the idea is like, oh, hey, if I would like to make one Jersey style comics creative challenge for journaling comics, um, I take, you know, um, you know, a, a, you know, a, a cup of milk and a, you know, gotcha. Three teaspoons so, of water and who knows. Index cards, um, ingredients, notepads. Uh, I'm gonna say I have a, a collection of children's notepads. Mm-hmm. Like old rainbow bright notepads. I have a like a, a pad of Kool Aid Man paper. Um, <laughs> that wow, save, that's awesome. I, that I save for special occasions, you know. Um, and then say like pencils, brush pens, color pens, like I'm using right now. I love this multi pen so much, Rob. Okay. Um, to make, to make. Uh, so you're asking me, instead of saying comic panels, what else am I making here? Collection. And it could be, yep, uh, the kind of product. Again, this is the glitch in the matrix line where you could say, I answered that question already. Or you could also get more specific because it's like you're making this element to then compose it into this bigger thing of elements. Yeah, or and, blog um, post. Cool. All right. And learn. So, yeah. What do you mean by that, Rob? What? what well, um, you, what? This is a this is the blurb summary that can go in a brief description in the recipe of of like okay by doing this you're going to learn, um, the um, uh, let's see, rapid journaling, clarifying the um, uh. uh like we, well, since we're, this is almost a sequel to the prior episode of Lean Into Art, um, in a way, you know, navigating the, um, the scary parts of, mm. you know, putting feelings in the comics. <laughs> again, <laughs> I don't know if, yeah, it's, again, it's my paraphrasing, but, uh, just thinking of the past episode. Well, also I'm reminded of something I wrote earlier when I was doing this journaling was, uh, New approaches of storytelling, professional development. Mm. So it's mm. like professional de- development. Right on. Okay. And it, that's exactly what this these worksheets are for. It's like, okay, this is the refined second draft of the thoughts you captured in the prior parts of the journal. Mm. So, mm-hmm. all right. Okay. Um, okay. And what what about the sharing and, you know, frequency? Are you going to share a lot? You're going to share you know, constantly you're going to do it all at once. Um, um, so I'm going to say hourly, I'm shipping them mm-hmm. as I finish them. Ship nice. as finished. Okay. And yeah. Oh. And then how much socializing are you going to do along the way? That is what not zero cost. <laughs> I said so, something about that. Where it's as a that? creative you know, helping uh, you and I run a creative challenge and, uh, and of, we've both participated in lots of them and the social dimension can add a lot more meaning and connection and togetherness, but it also is not getting the, the other aspects of the work done. It takes time. What do you want that to be? Right. Okay. So medium amount of socializing. Um, all right. Collaborating is this collaboration. Uh, you're forming a band, you're doing this solo. Um, doing this on my own. All right. My name is Lobo. I hunt alone. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. So is there, um, let's see, it, do we want to do a, another break and then 
sort of, you know, share some thoughts about uh, the experience of this and wrap up. All right. Uh, Hello? What's what's the other break? So we did we did um, the Patreon. We did our personal we did the Patreon work. already. We did yeah. them both already. You know, <laughs> recording two shows in one day. I'm sh- it's showing on me right now. <laughs> Oops. No, it's, a, it's all right. So, but I mean, if we're at a good uh, stopping point to consider something, I am all for it. Because yeah, that was that was. I mean, you want to talk about engaging? I was in, thoroughly engaged in like putting all these ideas down so rapidly. Um, well, uh, well, awesome. I think. I mean, let's. What if we just sort of you know, uh, mention that then? Um, uh, you know, like a prompt for anyone to try. Clearly, so you go to you know Bitly, go bit.ly/cync. CCWS, customizing your next creative challenge worksheets. Um, go ahead and get you know get this, and you can play along. Do your own self interview. You saw how we use this, right? It's it's nice to have some context for like how does this work. Also, hey, whole workshop. Go ahead and avail yourself of that. Um, you know, it's a paid thing, but it's there for you as well as a supportive mechanism. Um, then uh, it doesn't take that that long to to go through all this. If you um, just sort of, but you need to set yourself up with a work session or two. Um, normally, we're going to, we'll, we'll t- I'm talk a little bit more about Jersey's reactions to think about what we learned from doing this in a second. Um, but like as a mechanism of doing this, you wouldn't have to do this all in one session. You could do this over a couple of days. Um, but it's good to do the pre work, thinking through these things in general, and then distilling it down into your recipe as the end. That's a good flow. Then there's one more step that we're leaving out. Um, which is the testing your idea. And then that's when you, your, your creative challenge isn't just sort of a, a hand wavy thing. Yeah, you were thoughtful. That's super cool. But then hey, did you test those thoughts? That's another piece of the workshop that we're leaving out. Um, so when you actually give it a, a try, you don't have to go for the whole creative challenge to repeat it or what have you, but do a nibble at it. What would be a piece of it to give you some experience to say, oh, okay, uh, I totally got to fix this part or what have you. That's what, then, then you refine the recipe and you're set. Uh, you're ready to, to, to go ahead. But, um, okay. What do you think about, uh, what so, you learned from this? I mean, like not, not to turn this into full on infomercial, but like there's a section on the, um, sheet that says what didn't go so well with your challenge. And I don't want to dig into that here. I feel like that's something that mm-hmm. like the workshop would be able to elaborate on better because I think a, a, an aspect of this worksheet is, is asking you to do throughout the whole thing um, intentional reflection on the way you work, the things you enjoy, what brings you pleasure, what brings you the right amount of difficulty. I had this conversation with my students recently where I talked about how um, if you put you, you get a new game for your Switch, you pop it in and you start it up and it says, guess what? You won. You're not going to play that game ever again. Right. Because it's, it's counterintuitive, but mm. what makes them fun is having the right amount of challenge and defining what the right amount of challenge for you is not the easiest thing in the entire world. Right. Um, because I watched you play Battlefront and I was like, that looks amazing. That is a beautiful game. It's like you're in Star Wars. Holy cow. And then I got there. I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm upside down. <laughs> so. I feel like uh, being able to carefully describe and then test to see what what you were right about and what you were wrong about in in your assumptions or your reflections so that you can refine that. I think that that reflection part is an important part, like the reflection at the end, like what what went well, what didn't go well. And I feel like there's some there's some clues along the way in the way you have this structured where you have like a, a path to investigation. But I would say like. Let's let's not cover that because that that's something that that's valuable business that's in the workshop that people should go get um, on mm. G- Gumroad or Skillshare or book a time with Rob because then you'll actually be able to like sit and like work it out with him. Um, mm-hmm. But like, what did I learn? Um, you did for journaling and thinking about creative challenges, what I often do with comics is you chunked it out and so that I didn't have to think about other things in the moment, right? Because like when you say creative challenge, echo, 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 it can mean a lot of things and it can look like a lot of different things in a lot of different people's heads. I know what I mean when I think about creative challenge. I don't know what you mean, right? So getting granular and saying, okay, like let's not think about what the thing you're going to make right now. Let's just think about what do you find fun and engaging. Okay. You, you got that work done. 
Now let's think about what tools you enjoy using. All right. You thought that through. Now you can put that aside. And now we can go to the next. It's just the same way I think about making comics where it's like when I'm thumbnailing, it's like all I'm thinking about is big panel, small panel, close, far away. I'm not thinking about dialogue. I'm not thinking about body language. I'm not thinking about, um, mm. you know, perfect facial expression or illustration. I'm only concerning myself with this fundamental piece of the overall puzzle. And it will slowly accrue into the form that we finally see. So I feel like this is doing the same thing. That That's what I'm getting out of this is by backing away and saying like, okay, you want to do hourly comic day. First, tell me what games you like to play, right? What's that got to do with <laughs> hourly comic day, right? Hey, why'd you turn your chair to, chair around and sit down grabbing the back See, of it? I was going to compare it to you putting the, the helmet over my head with the blast shield on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in the chair with the whole and then I, and I'm watching you, you know, swat a laser bolt. <laughs> so... So, yeah, I mean, in, in like really getting me to stop and say like, okay, well, when I think of Resident Evil, I think about like the static camera shots and hiding things behind a wall and that's part of it. But what's broadly speaking, what do I find compelling about that game? And the moment I stopped and backed away from that, I said, oh, it's definitely, it's, it's the solving of a mystery. It's the solving of a puzzle, uncovering pieces of things and putting together meaning from logical bits right and like in those puzzles like there's bits that don't seem like they need to be there at all right like like finding a, a key behind a painting or something like that or like there's like a riddle written on a note behind a painting that you got to like figure out what to do with it's like mm. that was part of the inspiration for me saying like oh there should be a, some level of randomness to this if i had a random grab bag of stuff that i have to make that work in the moment right mm -hmm. so yeah, that was, I yeah, I mean it's it's I love seeing what comes of anyone going through this kind of thought process because it's really a personal thing to say this is what I find fun and how could I use that to inform a creative endeavor and that's uh it's going to be a different answer and so but but at the and being there some for for people when they're doing this it's uh it it's, it's it was really fun to see um, the, the, like the elements that you brought out, um, that, um, you know, it's always good food for thought. See how people think of their creative challenges. I have so, one more, one more thought on this that mm -hmm. I'm really surprised by. I, this was like, I couldn't have planned this Rob. So you asked mm -hmm. me about games I don't like and uh, I worked on life, right? And I, what do I hate about <laughs> life? I hate that it's prescribing a certain worldview through the game. It's implicitly, less than, more than implicitly prescribing this is what you do in life, right? To win the game. And that, that goes back to something fundamental about me is I don't like prescriptions in my creativity. I don't like telling people how to live their lives. I like holding up suggestions and options and modeling, like the characters that model ideas, but I don't like my characters turning to the camera saying, and that's why you don't do X, Y, or Z, right? Um... I think that's part of the reluctance of me doing a journal comic is I feel like there's an implicit prescribing mm. of this is the way I live. I chose the bright way, right? I wonder if that's mm. part of my reluctance. Oh, wow. That's, that's so that's, funny. Wow. That's like two episodes <laughs> formed one episode. You if both you, tried you me. Hear the puzzling from <laughs> you hear last week's puzzle. And yeah. And now, now this, this exercise, yeah, you re-engaged with it. That's fascinating. What a cool thing to figure out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay, that was fun, Rob. That was a really, really fun mini workshop. Um, so, uh, man, you got you to lead this one at festivals when we can actually go to festivals again. I, <laughs> yeah, sold. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing people in rooms again and, <laughs> all that it's yeah. yeah so uh this is uh this is the the not hopefully non-timeless part of hearing things that were created during a pandemic like yep yeah so aren't we quaint hopefully so, future folks listening to this oh i hope so that 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 is that is a uh a blessing for the future for sure mm. that, that this is all feels very quaint to people listening years from now um Okay, so any other prompts that you want to throw out for the audience to consider before we close this one up? Uh, yeah, I mean, thinking of the like wondering questions, uh, recommendations, like um, this, 
creative challenges are, it's so easy to trigger your ambition and your desire to grow and all that stuff. And, and not, um, I'm saying this to me and if it helps you, that's cool too. Um, but, uh, being, being honest about the constraints and being gentle with the honesty, both, um, like abundance of honesty and abundance of gentleness to, uh, uh, to just be open to making the challenge, not that challenging and, uh, but make it fun. That's, uh, that's some good tuning uh, and good things to consider because, you know, the, the ambitious recipe, you know, may not get you to feel like you've been wanting, you, you want to feel about the experience. So good to question it with that, uh, uh, like, you know, a, the gentle perspective. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, I think that's my final, final thought recommendation on that. What's, uh, any, any other thoughts? Oh, I think that's great. I think that's a great cool. summary is like being aware of the fact that like part of what makes it pleasurable is the right amount of challenge. I don't go to video games to feel overwhelmed. <laughs> right? I don't want to go to a board game so I can feel like I can't breathe. <laughs> so uh, hmm. I, I, there's, there's a certain amount of easiness to it that makes it fun, too. So mm-hmm. uh Good thing to remember. So thank you, Rob, for this, this, this workshop. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, if people want to play along, you know where to find us. Uh, we record the show weekly, and it gets dropped on Thursdays at lenatoart.com and patreon.com slash lenatoart. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of lenatoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of lenatoart.com and Rob Stenzinger places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening. <laughs>